All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Shane. I'm Lex. Happy snowy day to all of you in snowy places. Everybody in Florida. In Florida, yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to get snow. It, it, it was a really, really big letdown. I was told it was when you like 10 to 12 inches up by my house. And wow. was really? A, a got, dusting. Yeah, it was a I dusting down here as well. My place. I think Lex got the most. He did. I'm like 1,500 feet higher than that guy. <laughs> yeah, well, you should have got more than me. I think it all ended up on my house and then all it right. kind of petered out on the way to your place. So. Well, we're going to drink. We're going to do some uh, PD Q&A. And, and we're going to drink. Yeah, let's see if we can't get some. Uh, I think we have some questions that have come in, but I'm not sure uh, how handful. many. Handful. handful. But uh, keep them coming, everybody. Yeah, yeah. let's do. Let's and I guess there's not going to be a, a, a podcast next week for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Happy Turkey Day to next week, guys. Yeah, the American, the American holiday, the, the U.S. holiday. So rock on. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. Question comes from Timo S. Dear Shane and Lex, we use custom fields to display data, like the date machine was bought, etc., in inventory. I want to share this information with our other admin, both have an enterprise level license, and also access the data he entered. He can access my collections and vice versa, but this information is not shared. What can we do? Thanks and rock on. I'm told not to do Yeah, I was rock told on. not to do that, but oh, I'm gonna oh, do it. Rock on. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, rock on. Hey, uh, um, you know what? It, 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 it don't, yeah, everybody has different, you know, different cultures and stuff like that. Well, that's from that's from Motorhead. That's from that's a good classic rock on. And if you don't like that, then I don't, I don't, I, I, then I don't care. <laughs> rock on. <laughs> rock on. Yes. So, so Timo, you've got okay. So this is this is actually kind of by design, unfortunately. And the issue behind it, we'll explain that too. Sure. So we can do that. Well, so what you're talking about is you've got. Um, Custom field to enter your custom field. This is this is a custom field is um, <coughs> some where you can track information that can't be grabbed via an inventory scan. Like a, in this case, he mentioned purchase date, I believe. So uh, we actually got that question in before and just wanted to show you that we were showing you what we were doing here. Um, uh, there's the purchase date. It's a date type. And this will show up in every single computer in your as an available field in every single computer in your database. So you can go to Abraham, and uh, maybe on this purchase date, you know, you can type in a date. The problem is when you're sharing data, uh, when you're sharing your your database with other other admins, custom fields data is not the actual data is not shared, and that's just because we wanted to prevent conflicts. The field will get shared, right? The, the actual field will should get shared. So if you so purchase date that you create here, and if you're sharing your your um, database uh, database with another uh, console, and then they look at that, they they, they build a, a collection of their share your their access one of your collections. If they don't have that custom field, it will be created. But the data is still per console. And the reason being, again, like, like Shane mentioned, is like who, who's the boss, me or Shane? If I put the data in, does my data override his data? Yeah. So, and, and without being able to determine that and, and make that, it's just safer that we don't have data. Yeah, conflicts. so in that case, in the case of custom fields, yeah, that's, that's, that's a limitation. Um, in, 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 a, in, a coming, in a coming day, perhaps, if there's uh, other, other, other solutions which we're hoping for, that would uh, obviate that problem. Yeah. Or the, the need like to have those. But we'll, central database. Yeah, but we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we get to yeah. it. So I'm sorry, Timo. Um, hey, thanks for using the... Uh, the product the, the shared, the, hopefully, the, you find a lot of the shared features uh, are helping you guys out, and particularly if you use the uh, shared the uh, scan caching, that can help yeah. quite a bit. Dearest Shane and Lex, how can I search inventory for Outlook.pst files larger than one gig? Sincerely, Eric J. Love this. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. First, I just want to do a shout out to we have videos on this, so you can always you know. We'll show you how to do this, but we also have videos. Yeah, on the videos list. actually are a little outdated because I think those videos were shot before we, we introduced the, the, the file new size. File well, yeah, before we introduced the new file filter and the yeah. registry fil uh, registry scanner. Okay. Okay, so there's two things you're going to have to do. Well, a minimum of one thing you're going to have to do, but um, generally off. two. Yeah, you're going to have to go and actually specify what kind of file you want to scan for, and you can choose a scan profile that you're going to use. Um, or you can create your own scan profile. We'll just create a new one just for just for giggles here. That's PST, right? Yep. You can do it just for large files. We'll just do large PST files. 
And when you're ever creating a scan profile, you have to de de uh, de define what scanners you want. I always recommend putting computer details in there. Um, just keeps the data updated. Yeah, and I, I mean, I like to add applications too, but that's up to you. But you do need to do a file scanner. Mm -hmm. And the file scanner, this is where you just you specify where to search and the, the, the pattern of the pattern of the file. Now, a caveat on this, guys, you could search the C drive, but, you know, like, uh, 200,000 files yeah, or more. Yeah, it can take a while. It can take a long time. So you might, the closer you can get to where these things should exist, mm -hmm. the better off you're going to be. You can use system variables. Uh, I'm sorry, you can use Windows variables. So if you wanted to go to uh, the C drive, which is normally the C drive, you could type in like the system drive variable or mm -hmm. something like that. But I'll just do C. We'll just hard code it here. Maybe go to C users. And this is where you can do wildcards because, you know, under C users, there's going to be the names of every Shame, profile. Wax, you don't know what they're going to be. So we'll just do a, a whack whack. And that means if you look at the little uh, legend, I guess, above, little hints above, you've got whack whack means the current in all subdirectories, mm -hmm. and then uh, the local data, you think? Uh, yes, use your local, It'd be, or app data, excuse me. Is it app data? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Re reason why you won't want to use the app data variables, some of you might be going, hey, whoa, app data is a variable. That's a user level variable. Don't use that one because um, y y that's, that's going to be scanned only in the context of the system account. Pop that right there. Okay. So we'll just do app data and then... Um, the majority of your PST files, if whack, we're looking at those specifically, are going to be... Um, so that, should that do it right there? That will do it. So we're going to say look under C users, app data. Any folder there? Any folder, uh, PST. Perfect. It's generally so, going to be in the Outlook folder, is that right? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Microsoft Outlook, yeah, it'll be under that, but... Yeah, you, know, you can put them where you want them. So yeah, well, Lex, Lex actually said he'd copy this out. Just, just he was doing that while he was talking to people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the pre thing, I guess. <laughs> Sneaky. Yeah. So you you need to create your scan profile, uh, your file scanner, and whatever scan profile you're going to do, and then scan that, and then scan those computers with that. Um, what was the name of the computer you want to scan? I'll do uh, Ragnar. I happen to know there's a PST file out there. Surprise! Surprise! Wonder why. So when you scan the computers, remember, you're going to scan using the profile you modified or created. In this case, we, we did large PST files. So it's not just enough to you know, scan with your default profile. If it's just scanning for applications, you have to scan what you just determined. And then there's a couple of ways of finding out what, uh, what you have there. You can go to the file, open the computer window, and go to Files. And assuming we did that right, um, it'll come back. And we did we did have some pretty high level wild cards up there like so it's C users. Scale yeah. a little bit, yeah. Wow. Are we testing this live? Is that yeah? Testing Did we test live? live? We, we, uh, yeah. Test in production. Test in production. Throw it out there. And then if you want to create a, a collection, um, or you want to create a report, then you can do that. And then the the size is where you can. The size is where you can define that. Um, where you say I want to sh show anything that's larger than this. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We, we did too many wild cards there, dude. It's going to take a minute. It there it yeah. is. Lex Archive, Lex Super <laughs> PST. I wanted it to be obvious, okay? <laughs> what? Big McLarge, huge. Big McLarge, huge. Big. <laughs> okay, so. If you read Lex's Super Big PST. Yeah, there it is. So, that, <laughs> now, now this would show any, now this will show any PST, even if it was 600K, that happened to live under C uh, users. Uh, you know, wildcard, app data, mm -hmm. and then anything under that. So where, you, where, where the one gig comes in, obviously you can look at this and sort, you know, or, uh, order by this size, but you're probably going to want to do like a report. And to do a report, it would be, um, so you just do a basic report real quick. Say, uh, show me the computer. Then access the file table. Let's do the file path and then we'll add a new one do file name yada 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 and then there's a uh, there we go there's size. the file size all right and then where we limit it to the large files under filters mm -hmm. so and we, 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 we won't make this too complex just for time's sake so we'll actually just say the file Named. name can, uh, and how about if we do it ends with I love it PST dot PST Okay, so then now we see there's two files there, but the, where you could come in on the additional filter is to say, and the file size 
is uh, greater, than greater than, and then um, let's see what we got here. I got one that's uh, yeah. So there's there's the size. Obviously, you're gonna have to do the math, right? This is showing this is showing up in bytes. bytes yep. So you, either you can do the math or just look at that and say, okay, anything that's that's larger than whatever whatever value you yeah. want. Just remember that we're reporting that in bytes. Okay. That's how you can do that. You can mm -hmm. then show. You can then filter out and say, "Oh, these are the large files. These are people that are have that have ISO files, or these are people that have their music files, or in your case, PST." So the size is all part of um, the of uh, the uh, the filters, the reports, the collections, and then of course you have to have your scan profile. <laughs> Dear Shane and Lex, <laughs> so good to see the two of you sharing that big screen together again. You know. In PDQ inventory, can a dynamic collection be created for Windows 10 computers actively using BitLocker? We use another encryption product, and I don't want to install over those computers. Not my real name, Swellswork. Well then. Uh, actively using BitLocker. We do grab, do we have any BitLocker machines? Oh uh, boy. Uh, we might have to phone a, phone a Brig on that one. Uh, Brig is brings out sick today. Brig's out sick today. Mm -hmm. Well then, uh, I don't know. No worries. Call them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just click, click this real quick. Um, I believe. BitLocker encrypted. So you've got the BitLocker under the logical disk filter. You could say, show me um, in you know, any computer. Uh, BitLocker version. Bit, BitLocker is locked. BitLocker, yeah. Um, do a go through, go through all, go through all these. I believe it's probably going to be, you know, BitLocker is locked. That means it's the, it's probably active. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any computers? I don't know if we even do. I don't know either. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. Play with the BitLocker. It's under the logical disk, disk. table uh, in your collections and in your reports, and. Um, You'll be able to. You'll be able to you know, figure out which one's there. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Chris's computer Fry oh. has bit. Fry locker. has bit. Locker. I don't think we have Fry so on I here. I don't know if it's on the. Uh, I think they took Fry off because I always wanted to launch stuff to your machine mid webcast nope, just to nope, mess with there. Fry. Oh, there is sweet. Let's see. Hey, Chris, how's it going, dude? Like the Corgi shirt. Thank you. Did you like my Corgi poster note? Dude, I saw that. Yes, I oh, did. Yeah. So Chris wants a shout out. It's PowerShell's what? 10th, 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 10th birthday. birthday today. Happy birthday, dear Honestly, Power Show. Why do you keep that in your mental Rolodex, man? That's, that's, just, that's wrong. Because that's so Chris, wrong, Chris loves two things. Corgis <laughs> and Power Show. Power Show. So I'm going to move. So I just, I just went to Fry. All right. Went to the disk drives. I'm going to click on this little... Uh, Customized grid? Yep. I'm just going to say, show me everything. Because we, 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 we kind of hide those by default. So BitLocker is, is not locked. The, uh, uh, the other drive. The other drive? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so BitLocker protection, That's what, I guess that's what you want to do. It's a Boolean yes, no. Um, BitLocker is locked as no. So it is uh, BitLocker. Thank you very much. It's BitLocker protection. And um, that's what I would do then. So to answer your question, go to your filters, look for BitLocker protection, and it's going to be Boolean. It's going to be uh, true or false or yes or no. So Chris, what, you, be, what are you that, hiding that's, on that? That's drive? how you can avoid duplicating those, uh, duplicating the uh, encryption, yep. the encryption features. Thanks, and, Chris. And we have a question from Monica, who, by the way, got yet another promotion. Well done, Monica. Yes. We done. Well done. Sweet. What is the best way to remotely uninstall an application that shows its C drive location as its uninstall path instead of msiexec.exe in PDQ inventory? Well, since we have, since we have the computer fry. Fry, right? yeah, let's start uninstalling stuff on Chris's machine. <laughs> Cor <Go>. Corgis suck. <laughs> PowerShell's <laughs> awful, Chris. <laughs> no, we, we, I'm not going to do that. I like Chris. I, I like Chris, too. But, but I, you, you happened to tell me that Ragnar is your computer. Easy. So we're going to go ahead whoa. and go to Ragnar. <laughs> there we go. All right. So what you're talking about, Monica, and congrats on that promotion. Yeah. Yeah. When you, open, when you go to the applications um, window in... When you go to the applications window, let me move that over a little there bit. There we go. You'll you can that. see uh, the uh, uninstall string. Yeah, if you see MSI exec, all we're doing is we're going to the um, uninstall value um, 
or the uninstall string value in the registry for each application. Mm -hmm. And this is the same when you go to the old add remove, add remove programs or uh, using XP parlance mm -hmm. or the software features or programs features uh, later. When you go to that control panel and you hit uninstall an application, it runs that that uninstall string, which is usually interactive. So if, if it's MSI exec, um, it's a slam dunk. dunk. You don't have to put any. Uh, yeah, if it's an MSI exec, we automatically see that and replace the, uh, you know, replace some of the parameters. Mm -hmm. We take the slash I and remove, put a slash X, which is remove, and we do a slash QN. That's easy because that's fairly universal. What you're saying is, um, for non MSI exec, the answer is it depends on the application. You're going to have to find the silent parameters mm -hmm. for that application. Google foo. Yeah, that's where that's where like the Google foo is going to come in. So, actually, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it on. I'm not gonna pick when you could uninstall. But we'd have to go Google it to uninstall it, man. Well, uh, for example, I'm gonna go to to, mo to, to Firefox. You want to uninstall Firefox? Click uninstall. All we're doing is grabbing that value from the registry, which once again usually doesn't have silent parameters. Oh, so you you, you've got to you've got to specify the silent parameters. Um, if you have now, if the application that we're offering that you want to uninstall is in the package library, you can usually use that to see, have a cheat sheet to see how the way what? it's installed is often the way it's uninstalled. Um, Parameters are generally the same. But Google Foo, just you find out that a dash MS is the way to silently uninstall Firefox, just like you can install Firefox silently. So uh, you, you're going to have to append. Okay, hand, hands off the mouse. That's yeah. my machine, man. <laughs> you're going to have to append. <laughs> Um, <coughs> do it to fry. Those, those, yeah, those. Do it to fry. That's right, do it to fry. We only have two, well, over a hundred lab computers here, and we're just going to mess with yeah. Chris. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can do that. <laughs> Once again, it does uh, come down to. Like, well, let's, let's take it. Well, I don't want to do. Yeah, I can't do that one, man. Um, now let's do package. We'll do package thirty-two. Is what we got here. What was that? You resized that window. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It was. Center that up there. Yeah, so if I wanted to remove a fast stone, how, you could either silent, silently, you know, or Google how to, how to silently mm -hmm. uninstall or even install fast stone, and that's usually going to be the answer. Since we have that in the package library, a uh, cheat sheet for you would be just to import that. Once again, this is not always foolproof, but this is a, yeah, we this hit, could help you out. Hit like 80% of it usually. I mean, so far, that's what we, we seem to see. So for fast on the to, it's a slash yes. s uppercase s. So in that case, uh, it's probably going to work here. We'll we'll test live. Go to fast stone image viewer. Do an uninstall and a pan. Do a space slash uppercase s. Hit run. Launch it. Yep. Find and out we, this is Chris's machine. He's out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know this is just one of the test machines. <laughs> this Dang it! You all the fun out of it. Huh? If it continues to run and never returns, then Either That's the, the wrong the, yeah, you got parameter. the incorrect parameters were, were placed, or, or something because it's 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 displaying a hidden window so that no one can see it on the target, but it's waiting for that window to be closed, yeah. saying you got the wrong information or something like that. But that's usually the way you just have to do some searching to find out what that is. And return code zero, zero so that would be successful. So if you have the new inventory, when you do a remote command like this, you can have it set to scan after. So it is scanning this computer, and we should see fast stone. Go away. I notice your glass is empty. Would you like me to pour no. you some more? So hopefully that answers your question. There's going to be some work on your part. Sorry about that, Monica, and congrats again on the uh, promotion. All right, we have any other questions? Yes, we do. Dear Shane and Lex, trying to find a way to create a dynamic collection if SCCM is installed. Any help? Fast Eddie A. Um, it's been a while since I've been on SCCM. Uh, if you can't, if it doesn't show that the agent is installed in the ad room, in the in the uh, applications, then you can do um, a search, a file search for. Uh, I think it's CCM exec. Mm, it's, been, it's, it's been too long. Yeah, it's been too long. Uh, is, find out what that agent that agent file is. CCM exec. Uh, you could probably also go to services because it's going to be installed as a service. And remember, when you're looking at your services. I'll go to. I'll just go to price here. There is a uh, an area here where you can look at the title, the name. So you'd find out. I think it's. I think it's all. The name's also called the actual name, not the title. It's called CCM Exec, mm -hmm. I believe. 
it's been a while, um, you would just search for any computer that has CCM exec as a service. Is so that, you'd use is that the a services. stumping? Huh? Is that a stumping? Did did Have we been stumped? Yeah. No, it's just, it's, it, whether, whether, I, guess it, I guess it could be stumped if... We don't know the file I think it's name, CC, yeah, I think it's, but we I think it's CCM exec. It. Yeah. But yeah. if anybody knows, by all means, pipe up. Are you trying to get us to drink? Better fill it? your glass up and drink. Fill your glass there. and drink. But if, it's, doesn't sh if something doesn't show up in applications... Have a little one. You huh? get stumped. Yeah, sure. If something doesn't show up in applications, remember that, you know, oftentimes it's a service, and mm -hmm. you can look for... Before you can look for the services. services. Oftentimes, it's if it's not a service, you can find the file or you can find the registry. Um, I know there's there's a, a program out there that a lot of hospitals use called Alta, A H L T A. Mm -hmm. Historically, Alta does not place its information as, that it's installed in the uninstall key, so it never shows up um, when you go to programs and features in the control panel. So how do you know it's installed? Well, that's where people that use that and use PDQ inventory, they'll do file scans, they'll do registry scans. Mm -hmm. You have to do a registry scan to find out what version's installed. Stuff like that. So, I mean, there's usually ways around it. And I, I do give you lots of tools to chase that kind of stuff down. So, mm -hmm. yeah, don't give up. Just because something doesn't show up in applications doesn't mean it's, in, it's it, you're, you're done. Dear Shane and Lex, I toss, deploy, and inventory on a server. Is there any way to drop a client on my desktop so I don't have to RDP? Jarrett L. Not at this point. Should, no, no. Let's. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not, buddy. Well, I had to think about it. <laughs> no, and not at this point. It, ponder. That was a ponder. It wasn't a thing. It was a ponder. Ponder. You spend your life pondering then. Good to act. I'm no actor. You guys know that. <laughs> I'm the same here as I am in my office as I am at home. Yes, ask Lex any question, he ponders it. <laughs> Mouth breathing. So, do, do you want some lunch? Uh, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, at this point, no. I mean, the, the, the application was built really to run the console and the server uh, piece or the service piece, uh, database. They're all, they're all interconnected. Yeah, interconnected. Now, we do have some plans to separate those optionally. I have to make sure that the, you know that that's, that'd be optional if we do this. And I think we're going to, but we don't have a date yet. I mean, we're drawing it up, um, going, through, going through the machinations. But at that you know, if we come to that point, then then yes, you'll be able to have a console connect to a a you know a dedicated server. Yep. Um, I doubt that would be a separate product, but it could be. Uh, it, I, I will say this: if it's not a separate product, it would require an enterprise enterprise mode and the appropriate number of licenses. So I know. At this point, no RDP or other remote control. You know, whether you want to do VNC or something like that. Um, that that's blah blah blah. Let's take another question. <laughs> okay. Next question from uh, Mr. T. Lars. So Mr. T. and Lars from Metallica combined to give you this little gem. Mm -hmm. Is there a way in PDQ deploy to show a message and wait until the user clicks OK? I want to deploy during the night and have the message on the screen when the user shows up in the morning. Okay. First of all, who cares about the end user? That's really, I mean, really. Okay. Do your stuff and let sure them deal with it. All right, so what you're what? talking I mean, you, you want to deploy during the night and have the message on the screen. So if you want to deploy at night and then have the message on the screen, that message is saying that it was deployed. Um, or Because the first part of the question is saying you want to wait until the user clicks OK. So you want to start the deployment in the night, and then when they say OK in the morning, then have it install. Or is it just you want the message um, to be there for them to go? Yeah. Oh, hey, I got By the, the new fire. So yeah. natively, there is a message command in the... Mm -hmm. in the um, you know, in, when you build a package, there is a way that you can display a message to the end users, and you can say wait for the user to click OK. But the way this works is, it, it will have a timer, yeah. and if they don't say OK after X number of after X amount of time, then it will just close, and then the deployment will kick off. There are some actually there, on our forums. On our forums, there are some some people that have built some. I believe one was a VB script that they actually execute using PDQ deploy and it pops up a message because mm -hmm. they run it as uh, as uh, deploy user interactive mm -hmm. and it pops up a message and then if that person says no don't do it it returns a success code or an error code that is not in the success codes field and therefore it errors it stops, out you know? yeah and that's somewhere in our uh, it was actually pretty cool um, it's not a feature we have natively right now we do have the message so uh, when you create again well he's bringing that up I'm just you're the sysadmin, okay? You are the god of all computers. 
force it on them. Okay, just cut to the chase. Force it on them. When you build, when you you can do the message as a kind of a Lex has never seen this feature before. I would never use it. You yeah, know that. where you can say, hey, you know, this app is going to reboot. Your computer okay, I take it back. I'll use that to go. You got three seconds to save your data. Ha ha. You, know? you can show this if you look down there <laughs> next to Lex. You can you, you can show for X number of seconds and wait for the user to click OK. But once again, once the user uh, clicks OK, it'll disappear. Uh, it'll move on uh, to or, the next step. Or if the timer runs out, it will not fail and say, "Oh, nobody says OK," so stop it. It will move on to the next step. And keep in mind that if you set your, if you try to exceed, say, 3,600 seconds, well, your, the default timeout Time out, for yeah. deployment is an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, show this for 3,600 seconds, and uh, nobody says anything, you know, nobody does anything, uh, then it will time out. Yeah. Basically, this, if this number you know, meets or exceeds the total timeout for that package. By the way, the default timeout is set in preferences, but you can override that here using a custom timeout at the top level package properties and type in the number of minutes. Another thing you need to know about that, let's say you're going to set this to an exorbitantly large number, okay? Whatever you've got set in preferences for the number of concurrent installs, it's going to take up one of those seats till it's done. Yeah, that's a good point. So, that's a good point. Because, yeah. yeah, by default, it's, uh, you know, eight concurrent uh, targets per deployment. So mm -hmm. if you're deploying to 100 computers, unless you've changed those settings, it's going to push out to the first eight, and then once those free up, you know, it, it, it'll, day, move, yeah. it'll move on down automatically. But yeah, if they're all stuck on a 3,600 second message. Waiting for someone to go, hmm. So anyway, the, what, this, what this other fellow did, I know, was he created a command step. Uh, actually, it was a, a, an install step with a VBS script mm -hmm. um, running as deploy user interactive, I believe. That did bring up the message. And then if they didn't say, if they didn't answer or if they said no, then it would. Well, and he'd uh, run into the same timeout issues though, wouldn't he? Uh, yeah, if you, if you, so. if your, if your timeout is set, I mean, you, but, but it, there's a difference between what, you, what I think what, you, what this guy is wanting. There's a difference if you're saying this person actively said no, I can tell that from I can the error code okay, versus this timed out. Yeah, but. okay, good point, good point. We are gonna be ma making some modifications. We do have plans on modifying the message the message step to allow a little bit better uh, or more features, but that's that's not happening right now. So. UFC IT, baby. Save yourself the trouble. And our final question of the day is brought to us by David B. Is it possible to do an inventory scan as step one in a deployment? This was if the product that's being updated is already on the current version, the deployment would cancel. No. There's a way to do that, though. No, the, the, no, 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 that, no. There's, that, a way, no. there's a way to accomplish what he's looking for. There's not a way to do that. That's true. Okay. <laughs> or Thank you. If you're watching this, no. No. Yes. Yes. No. Now we're going to duke it out. Okay, so and no, drink. there's there's a scan after. Obviously, yeah. you're aware of that, David. Um, but there's not a scan before. So, number one, before I, before I hit a, a really important um, deployment, I will often scan those existing targets just to make sure that they... Um, if they don't need it, they don't need it. But there's, there are ways that you can do this, particularly like, uh, let's say, in, in, in Faststone, just to open this one up, you could... File and registry conditions. Yeah, you could say, uh, if this already has it, uh, go to your conditions and use a file or registry condition. Basically, <laughs> find a file. Here we go. File exists. Say if if this file exists in this path, here's the file name, and if it has like a file version, if they're using the headers properly, you know if that file version already exists, don't run this step. Yep. Now keep in mind conditions are per step, mm -hmm. so you would have to set that condition on all of these, or tell it to error out. And yeah, okay or what error. you could do, not worry about the conditions, but write a script that runs at the very first to say if this file exists of this version, so you'd have to script that out. If it exists, exit with a code that's not in your success codes right mm -hmm. there. Let me highlight that again. Gross. And it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to use the script. The script way is if you want to actually stop the entire deployment, because once again, conditions don't, super, don't extend beyond that particular step. So um, if Faststone 
if you're using conditions and you don't want to install fast stone, then you know you don't want to stop fast stone either. Yeah. If if it's if it doesn't exist, so you'd have to just kind of duplicate that 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 condition or use the script. A lot of people do use a script that they run mm -hmm. before. So yeah, rock on. Hey, it's been fun, Shane. I, I I'm tempted to just go and pull up CCM Exec to see because uh, I think that is the name of the agent. <laughs> you guys all suck. Yeah. Anyway, hey, I hope this helped. Uh, once again, we're gone next week, and and rock on. Hope you guys have a great one. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Thanks for joining us today for PDQ&A. Congratulations going out to Eric J. and Swell's work. Winners of PDQ Swag, send us your information at webcast at adminarsenal.com. We'll get your uh, prizes out to you as soon as we can. Please remember, no webcast next week. We'll be celebrating Thanksgiving. Have a fantastic holiday week.